Live, local, breaking news. This is WIFF News 4 at 6 in high definition. The Clemson student whose body was found Monday will be laid to rest this weekend. And tonight, family and friends gather for the visitation amid the mystery of what happened. Happening right now, the family of Tucker Hips is preparing to say goodbye. Visitation for Tucker Hips will start in less than an hour. WYFF News 4's Liz Loheis is live and local in Greenville with the latest. Liz? Visitation will start tonight at 7 at the Thomas McAfee Funeral Home. You, we've started to notice people are already coming in. Thousands are expected to show up tonight. Tucker died on Monday after deputies say he fell during, to his death during a jog with his fraternity. What led to the fall remains a mystery. His fraternity brothers are expected to attend the visitation and funeral tomorrow, and some of Tucker's friends will be doing the music. Tucker's pastor says faith. Is what's getting the family through this terrible tragedy. I think uh, Tucker's in heaven smiling at us today, and uh, even though he went to heaven quicker probably than he anticipated, he would say that all is well. The funeral is on Sunday at 2 o'clock at Rock Springs Baptist Church. We'll hear more from Tucker's loved ones coming up tonight at 11. Liz Lohheis, WYFF News 4, live in Greenville. Thank you, Liz. A Pickens police officer has been fired and was booked into the Greenville County Detention Center. Deputies say he was a danger to his own children. WYFF News, News 4 is Nigel Robertson with more on the charges. On the same day Christopher Gilbert was fired from the Pickens Police Department, he was arrested by the Greenville County Sheriff's Office. Our deputies were out due to receiving tips uh, in reference to there being drug use at the home um, and there being children involved. Inside his home north of Traveler's Rest, Greenville County deputies found methamphetamine and drug paraphernalia in plain view. Gilbert, however, was charged with three counts of child neglect. Officers found him sleeping in his bedroom. Uh, there was a 14-month-old child inside the bedroom with him. Um, there was a firearm that was located on the floor of the bedroom within close proximity of the child, and it was not um, secured in a uh, lockbox or anything. It was actually still in his holster. But he wasn't the only one arrested. His girlfriend, Megan Tesner, faces the most charges. Megan was charged with three counts of child neglect, possession of drug paraphernalia, and possession of methamphetamine. And his girlfriend's sister, Miranda Dickerson, is charged with possession of drug paraphernalia and meth as well. But just hours before his arrest across the county line, the Pickens police chief, Rodney Gregory, says Gilbert was fired for, quote, violating a city policy. He said Gilbert had lack of good judgment pertaining to his personal life. Nigel Robertson, WYFF News 4, Greenville County. Greenville County DSS was contacted and the children, ages 14 months, 11 and 13, were placed with an alternative caregiver. More charges could be filed. And deputies tell us some drug paraphernalia found in a child's bedroom has landed two young men in trouble with the law tonight. The Oconee County Sheriff's Office arrested 19-year-old Anthony Shaw and 23-year-old Stephen Medlin. A parent called the deputies after finding the drug paraphernalia in her son's room. Investigators found Shaw, say, say, Shaw gave her son teen son marijuana. The investigation also revealed that Shaw and Medlin were involved with two 15-year-old girls. Tonight, they face several charges, including criminal sexual conduct with a minor and contributing to the delinquency of a minor. The Highway Patrol tells us a man was killed after running a stoplight today. This happened on Augusta Road, just south of Greenville. Troopers say the driver ran the light, swerved to avoid traffic, lost control of his SUV, and crashed into the cab of a Kenworth truck. The driver of the SUV was killed. Investigators tell us the truck driver has some minor injuries. A traveler's rest student was suspended today and possibly faces expulsion. School officials say a knife and a rusty rifle were found in the child's car. Officials tell us it was not loaded and there was no clip for it. They say no one was threatened. The school says police were called and parents were notified through the school's automated calling system. Time for our Friday night hits game of the week. The game starts in about an hour. WIFF News 4's Mark Dofer is there live right now for the Woodruff Powdersville High game. Mark? That's right, Carol. They're going to be loud and proud in Patriot Country tonight, and well, they should be. This is a big night for Powdersville football. They're out to a 4 0 start, the best start in school history. They're ranked for the first time ever, currently ranked ninth, ninth, but a big opponent coming in here tonight, fourth ranked Woodruff making the trip here. The Wolverines just arrived about 30 seconds ago. That's one of the great games tonight. There are a couple of others around the area. Let's take a look here. 
There's a matchup tonight of undefeated teams in Oconee County. Third ranked Wren traveling to seventh ranked Seneca. Western 3A is loaded with ranked teams. This one will go a long way to settling that region championship. Boiling Springs battles Burns tonight at Nixon Field in Duncan. The Bulldogs have played a great brand of football over the last couple of seasons. The one team they can't seem to figure out is Burns. Rebels have a 14 game winning streak over Boiling Springs. Dorman taking the show on the road a week after upsetting the number one team in the state. The Cavaliers climbing towards the top spot in 4A. Second ranked Dorman is at JL Mann. Coming up in sports, we'll talk a little bit more about Powdersville versus Woodruff. Some folks in this community calling this the biggest ever high school football game in Powdersville history. Now, that only dates back a couple of years, but certainly you can see why they're excited as a top 10 matchup and our game of the week has come to Powdersville High School. We're live at Powdersville High School. Mark Doe for WYFF News 4. Going to be fun, Mark. Thanks for that. And uh, speaking of fun, a popular upstate fall attraction is officially open for business tonight. The Denver Downs Maze in Anderson County. You might be able to tell it's shaped like a tractor this year. And as always, there is a Clemson paw embedded in there somewhere. Let's look. It's in there. <laughs> this, right there we go. Upper right hand. The maze offers a lot of new attractions this year. A bigger hay barn, swings for the kids. They also have giant corn rollers. You get in those and race. There's pumpkin bowling, and you can pick your own flowers in the field. Catherine Davis says this event is something her family looks forward to every year. The whole family comes together and, and has to pitch in and help out. So we enjoy our farm heritage, and this is great to be able to share it with families today. Okay, want to go? The maze and the pumpkin patch are open through November 2nd, Thursday and Friday from 5 p.m. until 10 p.m., Saturday from 10 a.m. until 10 p.m., and Sunday 1 p.m. until 6 p.m. Denver Downs is on Clemson Boulevard in Anderson. The Simpsonville Police Department is opening a new substation in the Advance America store on Fairview Road. Police say a substation in that area will give those businesses a heightened sense of security. Station. The station will be used to write reports, meet with victims. Officers say it will also lower response time. And get this, police say the only cost to taxpayers was putting up the sign in front of the station.